And what? the example that Zizek gives is Gandhi, for instance. Um, and what made Gandhi violence is they, they just stopped working. They, right. you know, things. It can be much more if 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 um, when when um, uh, school teachers strike, and their goal is a change in their benefits or wages. And it, they stop. They just stop. Right. <laughs> the, the, sorry. And they that's a far strike, more yeah. violent act than blowing up schools, because blowing up schools literally does nothing to alter a system. It 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 is it is ultimately a conservative act. In a, in the, in the negative conservative sense, I don't want to again. Right. No, but yeah. but so, what would that look like for climate change, for instance? What would it look like to to be agenic, um, and and not, I'm not saying I completely agree, but mm-hmm. lots of folks would say, whenever we fall back on our Western notions of hyper individualism. Oh yeah. Because that's part of why we're in the trouble we're in now. We're literally playing into the same thing that got us in this problem to begin with. We're not thinking about it, and it's difficult for us to think about it because our horizon of meaning is fixed. The lens that we have on, is we don't question it. It just is there. Mm -hmm. And so how do we change the lens? How do we think differently and see differently enough to enact true agency? Yeah. And, you know, again, and I don't know the stats on this, but if you look at, you know, the plastic that's in the ocean, well, um, uh, where does it come from? Um, how does it get there? What sort of um, forces are at work that are in no way being affected by any of our individual actions? And those forces right. need to be questioned in some way. Now, and Zizek, you're not advocating for no individual action. No, right, it's just way. that... We have to be careful. Individual action can generate, it, it can discharge our sense of responsibility mm. and allow okay. us to stay in a place of complacency that isn't the level of agency that we need. Got it. So it, it, it does. Um, and uh, Zizek and company, they, they have a, a real, they, they don't like capitalism. They're not fans. Okay. So um, they would say that what the ultimate horizon is capitalism, and I talk about this in my paper. But you know, Zizek will say that even capitalism still exists in a post-apocalyptic world because if in the post-apocalypse, typically it's a zombie apocalypse. Yes, it is. And and people, all the buildings are overgrown, and the guy's walking in the street by himself. That but, kind but of. But what's thing. still yeah, happening? Seen, seen that movie. You still have masses of people consuming mindlessly <laughs> in the background. Right. Right. So literally, it. it the post-apocalyptic world simply reveals the very essence of capitalism, consume. And right. so what he would say is that even we can't even in our fantasies generate a space that is, that is post-capitalism. And so uh, his famous statement is it would be e- it's easier to envision the end of the world than into capitalism. So if capitalism is somehow, okay. uh, and, and right now we... We talk about neoliberalism, which, in a nutshell, the way I think about it is that we we are we are guaranteed individualistic freedom in the service of consumption. If I sort of were to define neoliberalism okay. in that way, all right, that's and one so, to uh, ponder. Just yeah, a so bit, yeah. literally, it is our freedoms. And a wonderful example would this be is and this is Zizek, not me. So, but um, we see now um, in uh, when the broadening of sexual diversity. So uh, there was a time when being gay was was uh, you get you killed. Not that it can't in some countries and maybe mm-hmm. even some regions of ours, but there's been a major shift. And now we're beginning to see the same thing with the transgender community. And what happens is once someone uh, from the margin enters uh, the discourse, capitalist discourse, they become consumers. So whatever truth they might bring in from the outside simply becomes uh, uh, becomes uh, accommodated. And then suddenly you will begin to see transgendered people on commercials selling jeans and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And not that that isn't a step in the right direction and whatnot, but it, it, it doesn't cause us to question and think about our own gender, our own sexuality, or sexuality in general. It might generate larger social change. Does that make sense?